So a guy asks, what's a trapezoid? And the other guy says, oh, it's a device for trapping zoids. Pickings were kind of slim on the trapezoid jokes. I couldn't find any really good ones. But first we're going to start by looking at some of the angle relationships in trapezoids. And what are the parts of a trapezoid? You were introduced to these in middle school and you remembered the bases. There was the top base, you could call it base one, and the bottom base, you could call that base two. If you mix them, it's not that big a deal. So you could just turn the trapezoid over and the other one will be base one, and the other one will be base two. Okay. They also have a set of non-parallel sides called legs. These are not parallelograms, okay? So I've got a leg over here and a leg over there. Consecutive angles which share a leg are supplementary. Why is that? So here I have my leg and I turn that into a transversal. These two segments are parallel, so those two angles are same side interior, which makes them supplementary. So angle A and angle D are supplementary. Similarly, I can do the same thing with the other leg, and I can see that angle B and angle C are also supplementary. Now, another type of angle pair are the base angles. So that's for two consecutive angles that share a base. So here I've got one base, and the two angles that share it, in this case, are angle A and angle B. The, that's a base angle pair. This other base, I have angle C and angle D. So that's another base angle pair. If the base angles are congruent, then that's actually going to make the legs congruent, and it is an isosceles trapezoid. So we're going to go ahead and start here with a regular trapezoid and uh, try to determine each of the angles. So first of all, I know I see this 124, so that's a good place to start. And I know that these two angles here are supplementary because they are consecutive angles, the legs are transversal. And I'll label that angle Y and say that 124 plus Y must be 180 because they're supplementary. Subtract 124 from both sides and I get 56 for Y. So now I know this angle is 56 degrees. Now that doesn't really tell me a lot about the other two because I could slant these different ways and it would still be a trapezoid. But the one thing that is true is that these two angles also have to be supplementary. So I'm going to say x plus x plus 22 is 180 or 2x plus 22 is 180 subtracting 22 from both sides. I get 2x equals 158. Dividing both sides by 2 then I get x is 79 degrees. Finally, that makes it pretty simple. I can either do this last angle two ways. I could say 79 plus this angle is 180. Or I could just say, well, it's x plus 22. Let me just add 79 plus 22, which is 101. And that does work out. 79 plus 101 is 180. They are supplementary. Now we're going to find the measure of the other angles in this isosceles trapezoid. And you can tell it's isosceles 1 because the two legs are marked congruent and also because the two base angles are congruent. Now I'm putting the 115 degrees in for angle A and it is supplementary to angle D. Well angle D plus 115 has to be 180 which makes angle D 65 degrees. Since these two angles are congruent, angle C also has to be 65 degrees. Well if this is supplementary, that means angle B has to be 115. So you can see that both pairs of base angles will be congruent on an isosceles trapezoid. So for further reflection, what are the different ways to tell if a quadrilateral is, trapezoid, is a trapezoid? One, make sure that it has only one set of parallel sides. Also, the angles that share the leg, the non-parallel side, must be supplementary. 